still my soul, the Lord is on your side. There patiently the cross of grief or pain, leave to your God to order and provide in every change he faithful will remain be still my soul your best your heavenly friend through thorny ways leads to a joyful end Soothe your sorrows and your fears. Be still, my soul. Your Jesus can repay. From his own fullness, all he takes away. Be still, my soul. The hour is hastening on When we shall be forever with the Lord When disappointment, grief and fear are gone Sorrow forgot Love's purest joy is restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Oh. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We continue with the confession on the right hand side at the bottom of the page. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on him, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Our intro for today from Psalm 119. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I call to you, save me, that I may observe your testimonies. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I hope in your words. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promise. Hear my voice according to your steadfast love. O Lord, according to your justice, give me life. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, <coughs> on us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. <coughs> With the Holy Ghost, art most high, in the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together the collect for this Sunday, written on the inside of your bulletins. O Lord, 
Let your merciful ears be attentive to the prayers of your servants, and by your word and spirit teach us how to pray, that our petitions may be pleasing before you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this Sunday uh, from the book of Genesis chapter 18, the Lord is speaking with Abraham. Then the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous in the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking, will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, for the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, for the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. And then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again, but this once. Suppose ten are found there. And he answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. This is the word of the Lord. Did the Lord find ten righteous? And the two cities were destroyed because of their great wickedness. Our second reading from the epistle to the Colossians, chapter 2. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all all rule and authority, In him also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God 
who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Be to thee, O Lord. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And Jesus said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, Yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks find, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We proclaim together our Christian faith as summarized in the Apostles' Creed on page 192 of your hymn books. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
let us suffer here with Jesus and with patience bear our cross. Follow all our sadness, where he is there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All this comforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus since thy death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify our passion that will lead us into sin and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate to heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you on high. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Walk in Jesus. Do you ever notice sometimes children sort of walk the way their parents do? Maybe a certain gait, a certain speed or so that they have. Some of that could be genetic, just by bone structure and how they're put together. Some of it by imitation. Of course, later on in life, sometimes people walk the way their, great, uh, their favorite musician or actor walks or do things even beyond walking to imitate them. To walk in the Lord is to conduct yourself in Him. In your thoughts, your desires, your goals, what's important to you is all affected by being in him, in Christ. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example. Let us suffer here with Jesus. Let us gladly die with Jesus. But let us also live with Jesus now and forever. Paul goes in our letter to Christians talk about walking in Christ, in him, rooted and built up in him. And that picture on the front of your bulletin has those roots just entangling into whatever soil or rock, whatever there that you integrate your life into Jesus or you're rooted and grounded in his word and his thoughts and his actions, and you're holding on fast to him as he holds on fast to us. You're built up in him. He is the chief cornerstone. And the, the apostles and prophets are that foundation, God's word, that we base our life on that. We built up on him, the firm foundation. We walk with Jesus 
in the faith that has been taught to us in the teachings about him. And here the Colossians had many temptations to believe many things. Religions from uh, the Persians, uh, the religions from the Greeks and Romans, uh, the religion of the Pharisaic Jews who had their own traditions added in. And that's why he says to them, be rooted in Christ. Base your life and build it up in Christ. Just as you were taught, remember those teachings that Christ has given to us. And abound in thanksgiving. And we'll see later on, Paul says, why you can be thankful, Christ to save you. But I would have to confess that I'm more inclined to complain about things. And we always have lots of things to complain about. But in the end, in the end of all things, all these things we complain about will be gone. And there is Christ and his love for us and taking us into that hope that he gives to us, a sure hope of what will be the final outcome. And so all the little inconveniences, all the things we complain about become very secondary. And we can always give thanks to God, even when we suffer, for the great salvation that we have in Christ. We are in him, not separated from him, but he's made it possible to be in him and walk in him. And why Jesus? Because he is fully God. Uh, chapter 1 had an expression of that, and, and here in, in chapter 2 it says that in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. All that God is, is in Christ. And Christ taking on a human body. It's there. No one else in the world. And this is the one who can save you. This is the one who can bring the true revelation from God and no one else. He became a human so that we can be also filled with God in a different way, but in God's fullness, his love and his mercy, his power to walk in Christ, to be like him. And there Christ is over all authority. He died and rose again, and all authority, whether it's human or spiritual, all kinds of evil, he's above that. He rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God in the place of power and authority. He is in all places, using all of his divine power for our benefit. So it says, beware of the false deceiving philosophies because they won't save you. People focus on the material universe to find guidance. And so especially with the Colossians, the influence of the Greek and Romans, the gods are in different planets. And you look at the planets and how they move and where they're situated and then you have the astrology to interpret those movements and how that's going to affect our life here on earth. And so you're looking at material things, seeking guidance for your life. Well, still today, a lot of people look at their horoscope. Oh, just interesting to look at, see what it might say. I wonder if they look at the Bible as often as they look at the horoscope. We'd have to confess maybe not. We don't. But even today, you know, with this new uh, space telescope that they put up there a little bit ago, and it's bringing back images that some astronomers, it brings them to tears, this all that's out there. And... And there was one kind of formed like this, and they say, oh, there's, there's the hand of God. And sad to say, in science today, 
Many think that the material universe and the energy and the forces out there, that's where the origin of all things come from. That's where God is. For those who study the elements, it would have been better to live at the time of the Greeks. They had earth, water, fire, and wind. Hot, cold, wet, and dry. The basics. And yet today, what does science do? Well, what, of course, they only had four elements. We've got, I don't know how many in the periodic chart. We've got all these elements. But we're even looking inside the elements to find what's the basic thing that they all share together. And they want to call that the God particle. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. You look at nature, you will find evidence of God's intelligence and his power. But those things won't save you. And those things won't bring you to saving faith in the Savior. God reveals that to us in his word. God sent his son in flesh, his word made flesh. And in that is life. And in that is salvation. Science is good. We all do it in some ways. We're studying our plants. We're studying the weeds in our garden. We say, why is this and why is that? How to make it better? Also, our own health. Studying why do I have this pain? Why that? What happened? We're studying what God has made. And it is a marvelous thing. And it gives us much wonder of how little we know of all the things, whether way out in space or inside of us. We study those things and marvel at God. But for our salvation, we walk in Jesus Christ. Not in the words and philosophies of humans who want to find their source of well-being or salvation in the elemental spirits of this world or elemental uh, matters of, of, of mass and energy. We're filled in Christ, that he is the head and we are his body intimately connected to him because of his grace. He's the one who saved us, St. Paul says. He freed us from our sinful nature. He goes that Christ gave us a spiritual circumcision to cut away that force of, of our sinful human nature that would lead us farther and farther away from God. And Christ has made us his people as circumcision was a sign of God's covenant with his people. Now it's a spiritual circumcision taking place in baptism where we die to sin and we rise to Christ. Something God works in such a simple act of water and his word. And Luther says every day you can receive power from that. Every day in repentance and asking for forgiveness, God brings us closer to him and helps us to fight against the, our sinful human nature. And it's not by our power, it's based on what Christ did on the cross. Paul has an interesting uh, example or image of Christ's death on the cross that all of our trespasses were like a note from the accountant of your debt and Christ took that and nailed it to the cross uh, today we burn the mortgage we don't have to pay anymore it's all paid up but Christ took that debt on himself, and it wasn't a piece of paper nailed to the cross, it was him carrying all our sins, all our debt, and he pays it. So we could have freedom from evil and false ideas. We could have freedom to live and walk in him. And so there at the end of our reading, you know, let no one therefore pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. All those Old Testament ceremonial laws have been fulfilled in Christ. 
But even yet, there are those in different religions, oh, you've got to give up this, you've got to do this, you've got to celebrate certain times of the years and dates, you know, people that uh, worship the sun at the uh, uh, June uh, 21st uh, and other times of the year and thinking in there that's power, but we're free from that. It's all in Christ. And anything that leads us against, uh, away from Christ, he says, no, come back, walk in Christ. Because he is the one who saves and no other. And in fact, it, it's interesting that in the news you interview all kinds of famous people, whether an actor, a scientist, a uh, military expert, uh, interviewing these people to find guidance in our lives. We sometimes think, okay, well, they should know better, but how much can a human being know? It's Christ. We walk in him. We can listen to others, but we listen first to Christ. And we walk in the path that he goes. Uh, one example I've heard about this is, is when you, uh, well, you see certain people with uh, headphones on, no, or they got little buds, and they're kind of walking like this, you know, they listen to their music. Or if anyone, or other people that like symphony, they're kind of a little more slow, going like this. Or, and they're kind of immersed in that music, and they flow with that beat. And the example is that we walk in Christ, we walk listening to his music and his rhythm and his beat. And don't let the world around us affect us. And listen to him and walk in him with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Uh, that he has the power and the guidance. He is the very son of God. All the deity is in him. And that deity comes to love us and to save us and rescue us, that we may have a living hope in this world of many deceptions and many uh, failures, that he lifts us up, that we will walk in him both now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of Christ, which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith in Christ as you walk in him. In his name, amen. Uh, we worship our Lord with our offerings. You may remain seated for our prayers. We will begin our prayers with the offertory, which we pray God to create in us a clean heart. In me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away 
from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son has taught us to pray that your name will be hallowed and your kingdom come. And for all our needs of body and soul, grant us trusting hearts that turn to you in all joy and sorrow, finding in your fatherly goodness and will all that we ask, seek, need, or desire. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, your righteous Son intercedes on behalf of sinners before your throne. When the outcry of our sin troubles us, grant faithful pastors to speak your word of warning and comfort, that we may be drawn in repentance to his cross and seek shelter in his mercy and so escape destruction. Lord, in your mercy. Hail, Almighty Father, you have given all rule and authority to Jesus Christ, our Lord. May our homes be permeated by your word that all families may dwell in the light of your Son. Grant your Holy Spirit to husbands and wives, parents and children, young and old, and all who live alone, that we may not be taken captive by the spirit of the world, but rather built up into him who is the head. Grant that we may always walk in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your people suffer in this life before they reach your heavenly kingdom. Please sustain Shelley Tuttle, Kim Dom, Joanne Walsh, Justin Miller, Phyllis Todd, Susan Utek, Sarah Hansen, Beth, Ken, Todd, Kimberly Christianson, Pastor Jeff Walsh, Howie Holden Reed, Joan Broom, Roxanne Dom, Karen Nissen, Diane Nelson, Matt Legrand, Josh Legrand, Bonnie Schneider, Pastor Jerry Broom, Debbie Langenberg, Bob Gruber, Will Wittenberg, and John Murray, Jennifer Veen, Titus Dedeker, Ruth Cornell, George Adam, Dusty Blunk, Brad Weston, Pat Eilders, John per Jan Persinger, Susie All, Donna Durant, Shirley Billier, Blair Penfield, Joan Peterson, Shelley Rasmussen, Jim Bremen, Ben Gibbeden, Erica Neiman, Mrs. Ruda, Rick Engel, Dale Betitel, and for our shut-ins, Shirley Patrick, Teresa Santee, Jane Winter, Bob Jager, Lois Went, Florence Knopp, Doris Beckman, Dave Hoff, Don Larson, Rose Johnson, Lois Lacklore, Kay Nelson. Please also be with Annette Pulse as she is recovering in the hospital. And we include all who suffer among us in body and in soul. Give them the same spirit you gave your servant Paul that they may endure in their holy faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Well, Lord, defend your church, especially Emmanuel Lutheran in Wakefield, St. Paul Lutheran, Eureka, Trinity Lutheran, Fairfax, St. Paul Lutheran, Fernie, the LCMS District, the Nebraska District, Concordia University in Texas, uh, St. Joseph Catholic Church and First Presbyterian Church, that they would all walk in your ways and come to know the saving truth in Christ and to live that and to uh, proclaim your name. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have planted us in Christ by your word and spirit through the waters of holy baptism. Keep us firmly rooted and built up in your Son, that established in the faith we may walk in him and abound in thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing 
and look to you as the giver of all good gifts. Make us ever eager to come to you in prayer and thanksgiving as your Son has taught us. By your Holy Spirit to bring us to behold in Christ the fulfillment of all those things for which we pray. Your holy name, your coming kingdom, daily bread, forgiveness, shelter and temptation and deliverance from every evil. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. You may rise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty, everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with you, thy, your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated for our final hymn. Bestowing, give me a healthy frame, and may I have within a conscience free from blame, a soul unstained by sin. Grant me the strength to do. With ready heart and willing, ever you command, my calling here fulfilling, that I do what I should, while trusting you to bless the outcome for my good. For you must give success. When within my place I must stand up to speak, then to my words give grace, lest I offend the weak. Lord, let me win my foes with kindly words and actions, and let me find good friends for counsel and correction. Help me as you have taught to love.
love both great and small, and by your Spirit's might to live in peace with all. Let me depart this life, confiding in my Savior. By grace receive my soul, that it may live forever. And let my body have a quiet resting place within a Christian grave, and let it sleep in peace. On that final day, when all the dead are waking, stretch out your mighty hand, my deathly slumber breaking, then let me hear your voice reading this earthly frame and bid me to rejoice with those who love your name. Amen. Good morning and welcome to all our visitors this day. Couple announcements. Uh, Angie's on vacation this week, and so I think they need some volunteers for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They got Monday, Tuesday, but they'll be in the office from nine to twelve. So if you, that might be a possibility. Talk to Richard Quan. Yeah. Or let Pastor Paul know. Yeah. Because I'm going to be gone a few days this week. Uh, the other is that Pastor Paul is gone on Monday because of a funeral in Wayne, and then he's gone the next Monday because he's going to the National Hispanic uh, Convention. And so um, there will be no Monday Bible class this Monday nor the next Monday. It continues on August 8th. And also the big uh, flyer in your bulletin about the Faith, Food, and Fun, if you're able to help out in any way, uh, please let let me know, or Pastor Paul. Any other announcements? Okay. The Lord be with you as you walk with Jesus this week. Amen. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Lord bless you.